Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will be using Quick Labs to perform a lab of Amazon Web Services AWS Identity and Access Management IAM. Amazon Web Services is a subsidiary of Amazon that provides on-demand cloud computing platforms and APIs to individuals, companies and governments on a metered pay-as-you-go basis. AWS IAM is a web service that enables Amazon Web Services customers to manage users and user permissions in AWS. With IAM, you can centrally manage users' security credentials such as access keys and permissions that control which AWS resources users can access. Quick Labs is a web platform that gives temporary credentials to Google Cloud Platform and Amazon Web Services so you can learn the cloud using the real thing but not in simulation environment. For getting access to Quick Labs, go to your browser and search for Quick Lab and click on the first link. You will have to sign in. You can sign in from your Gmail account. After signing in, go to the search bar and search for introduction to IAM. You choose introduction to AWS Identity and Access Management Lab. This lab will demonstrate exploring pre-created IAM users and groups, inspecting IAM policies as applied to the pre-created group, following a real-world scenario adding users to groups with specific capabilities enabled, locating and using the IAM sign-in URL, experimenting with the effects of policies on service access. IAM can be used to manage IAM users and their access, manage IAM roles and their permissions and manage federated users and their permissions. So on this task, at the top of your screen, launch your lab by, by clicking start lab. This will start the process of provisioning your lab resources. An estimated amount of time to provision your lab resources will be displayed. You must wait for your resources to be provisioned before continuing. Open your lab by clicking Open Console. Task 1. Explore the users and groups. In this task, you will explore the users and groups that have already been created for you in IAM. In the AWS Management Console on the Services menu, click IAM. In the Navigation pane on the left, click Users. The following IAM users have been created for you. User 1, User 2, User 3. Click user 1. This will bring to a summary page for user 1. The permissions tab will be displayed. Notice that user 1 does not have any permission. Click the groups tab. User 1 also is not a member of any groups. Click the security credentials tab. User 1 is assigned a console password. In the navigation pane on the left, click groups. The following groups have already been created for you. EC2 Admin, EC2 Support, and S3 Support. Click the EC2 Support group. This will bring you to the summary page for the EC2 Support group. Click the Permissions tab. This group has a managed policy associated with it called Amazon EC2 Read Only Access. Managed policies are pre built policies built either by AWS or by your administrators that can be attached to IAM users and groups. When the policy is updated, the changes to the policy are immediately applied against all users and groups that are attached to the policy. Under Actions, click the Show Policy link. A policy defines what actions are allowed or denied for specific AWS resources. This policy is granting permissions to list and describe information about EC2, Elastic Load Balancing, CloudWatch, and Auto Scaling. This ability to view resources but not modify them is ideal for assigning to a support role. The basic structure of the statements in an IAM policy is effect says whether you allow or deny the permission, action specifies the API calls that can be made against an AWS service, resource defines the scope of entities covered by the policy rule. Close the show policy window. In the navigation pane on the left, click groups. Click the S3 support group. The S3 support group has the Amazon S3 read-only access policy attached. 
Below the actions menu, click the show policy link. This policy has permissions to get and list resources in Amazon S3. Close the show policy window. In the navigation pane on the left, click groups. Click the EC2 admin group. This group is slightly different from the other two. Instead of a managed policy, it has an inline policy, which is a policy assigned to just one user or group. Inline policies are typically used to apply permissions for one-off situations. Under Actions, click Edit Policy to view the policy. This policy grants permission to view, describe information about Amazon EC2 and also the ability to start and stop instances. At the bottom of the screen, click Cancel to close the policy. Business Scenario For the reminder of this lab, you will work with these users and groups to enable permissions supporting the following business scenario. For example, your company is growing its use of Amazon Web Services and using only uh, is using many Amazon EC2 instances and a great deal of Amazon S3 storage. You wish to give access to a new staff depending upon their job function. So our new staffs are acclaimed as user 1, user 2 and user 3. And those users, for example user 1 should be in the group of S3 support who will have the permission of read-only access to Amazon S3. User 2 will get uh, the membership of EC2 support group which will have read-only access to Amazon EC2. User 3 EC2 admin group which will have the permission of view, start and stop Amazon EC2 instances. So if we talk about Amazon EC2, Amazon EC2 is an elastic cloud services that provides virtual service or virtual servers. Amazon S3 is a simple storage service provided by Amazon Web Services. Task 2. Add users to group. So we have re recently hi hired user 1 into a role with where they will provide support for Amazon S3. You will add them to S3 support group so that they inherit the necessary permissions via the attached Amazon S3 read-only access policy. Add user 1 to the S3 support group. In the left navigation pane, click groups. Click the S3 support group. Click the users tab. In the users tab, click add users to group. In the add users to group window, configure the following. Select user 1. At the bottom of the screen, click add users. In the users tab, you will see that user 1 has been added to the group. Similarly, add user to the EC2 support group. You have hired user 2 into a role where they will provide support for Amazon EC2. Using similar steps to the one, add user to the add user 2 to the EC2 support group. User 2 should now be the part of EC2 support group. Similarly, add user 3 to EC2 admin group where we have hired user 3 for Amazon EC2 admin post where he will be or she will be responsible for managing our EC2 instances. In the navigation pane on the left, click groups. Each group should have a 1 in the user columns for the number of users in each group. If you do not have a 1 beside each group, revisit the above instructions and above to ensure that each user is assigned to a group as shown in the table in the business scenario section. Task 3. Sign in and test users. In this task, you will test the permissions of each IAM users. In the navigation pane on the left, click Dashboard. An IAM user sign-in link is displayed. It will look similar to uh, this. Copy this link to our text editor. Open a private window and paste it. You will now sign in as user 1 who has been hired as your Amazon, EC3, Amazon S3 storage support staff. Sign in with I am username user1 and password. Password paste the value of administrator password located to the left of this instruction. In the services menu click S3. Click the name of one of your buckets and browse the contents. Since your user is part of S3 support group in IAM, they have permission to view a list of Amazon S3 buckets and their contents. Now test whether they have access to Amazon EC2. 
In the services menu, click EC2, navigate to the region that your lab was launched in by. Click the drop down arrow at the top of the screen to the left of support and select the region value that matches the value of region to the left of this instruction that is US West 2. In the left navigation pane, click instances. You cannot see any instances. Instead, it says an error occurred fetching instance data. You are not authorized to perform this operation. This is because your user has to uh, be assigned the permission to use Amazon EC2. So this user does not have that permission. So you get this error message. Now you will sign in as user 2 who has been hired as your Amazon EC2 support person. Sign user 1 out of the AWS management console by configuring the following. At the top of the screen, click user 1. Click sign out. Paste the IAM user sign-in link to the private window, press enter. Give IAM username user2 and again paste the value of administrator password located to the left of this instructions. In the services menu, click EC2. In the navigation pane on the left, click instances. You are now able to see an Amazon EC2 instance because you have read-only permissions. However, you will not be able to make any changes to Amazon EC2 resources. Your EC2 instance should be selected. If it is not selected, select it. In the Actions menu, click Instance, State and Stop. In the Stop Instances window, click Instances, click Cancel. Next, if User 2 can access Amazon S3. In the Services, click S3, which will give an error access denied because User 2 does not permission uh, to use Amazon S3. You will now sign in as user 3 who has been hired as your Amazon EC2 administrator. Sign user 2 out of the AWS management console by configuring the following. At the top of the screen, click user 2, click sign out. Paste the IAM user sign in link into your window and then enter. Give the username user 3 and password paste the value of administrator password located to the left of these instructions. In the services menu, click EC2. Navigate to the region that your lab was launched in by and make sure that you have the same region as given on the left of these instructions. In the navigation pane on the left, click instances. As an EC2 administrator, you should now have permissions to stop the Amazon EC2 instance. Your EC2 instance should be selected. If it is not, please select it. In the actions menu, click instance state, stop. In the stop instances window, click yes stop and this instance will enter the stopping state and will shut down in a few minutes. You can close your window. So with this, we have finished our lab. Return to your app. On the navigation bar, click AWS student and your account number and then click sign out. Click in lab, click OK and give a review and that is optional. So congratulations, we have now successfully explored pre-created IAM users and groups, inspected IAM policies as applied to the pre-created groups, followed a real-world scenario adding users to groups with specific capabilities enabled, located and used the IAM sign in URL, URL, experimented with the effects of policies on service access. For more information about AWS training and certifications, you can go to these links. And for more AWS Place Lab, you can go to amazon.quicklabs.com. You can also find additional resources on AWS training and certification site. And for more information about AWS IAM, you can go to this link. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please do share, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be coming with more kind of AWS labs again and again. See you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.